Ever since Jack Splat Lambert became a Steeler holdout, his agent, Bucky Woy, melodramatically has insisted Jack's whereabouts are to remain a secret. Oh, it's Charlie Chan stuff that Bucky Woy is dishing up, and it's caused the air to be filled with rumors that Jack has been spotted in this place or that. But pay no mind to wild rumors. We've traced Jack Splat's every shadowy move, and here's how our log on him reads. <laughs> Wednesday evening, a gent phoned our evening talk show to tell us Splat had been spotted in a South Hills cocktail lounge wearing a mustache and dark glasses and seated in a dim corner with a Polynesian dolly. Maybe so, but Thursday we know for a fact Jack was spied in Point State Park wearing a beard and a smock and painting an oil of the park fountain. To a passerby who glanced over his shoulder, Splat declared, if I don't get 1.1 million from Rudy, I'm going to sit here through next year's Three Rivers Arts Festival. Friday, Dan Rooney's young son phoned him to say he'd seen Splat giving autographs on a Mount Lebanon street, but hogwash. Friday, Splat was driving a Port Authority bus. He turned to his passengers, removed his front teeth, and growled, step to the rear of the bus, please. Whereupon three commuters were trampled to death and two more suffered fractured skulls plunging through the rear window. Greensburg radio station reported Jack Spot actually in training camp. The Greensburg sportscaster didn't know how right he was. For a fact, Jack Spot was right there at St. Vincent, disguised in the habit of a Benedictine nun and working behind the lunch counter in the Steeler mess hall. Coach Chasnall almost recognized him when he extended his bowl, and Jack ladled out to him a helping of cream of celery soup. But Chas then told himself there's really no reason why there couldn't be a six foot four Benedict. Later that same day, Splat roared off to his alma mater, Kent State, where he single-handedly arrested 61 dissidents holding up construction of a new athletics building. If it weren't for Kent State Athletics, cried Splat, I would never have been able to support lawyers and agents. And that's last week's log on Jack Splat Lambert. We've cracked Bucky Boy's curtain of secrecy. This is Myron Cope on sport.